guess what I'm doing today? I'm making something. And I'm actually kind of prepared today. Do you guys want to see what I'm making? Well, I have two. This one, um, these are coasters I'm going to be making at the end. I just got kind of lazy in drying them out, but we get the point. Also, today's video is sponsored by Cricut. Thanks, Cricut. So, first project I'm going to make. I'm making a dog bed for Jack and Benson. Okay, I feel like I didn't explain this very well. I'm making a custom dog bed for Jack and Benson, and I'm using four different colors, and I'm using stripes, and it's gonna look like this. So pretty much 90%, I think, of this dog bed slash pillow I'm making is prep work because I'm practically making a quilt. Like, I need to make all the fabric pieces before I can even start sewing the dog bed together. The fabric pieces, it's gonna take like two minutes to make. All I gotta say is I'm gonna be I'm gonna be pissed, but I'm not gonna be very happy if my dogs don't like this after spending like three days making this dog bed. In the end, if Benson and Jack don't like this dog bed, I'm gonna be a little heartbroken. I just ate lunch and I had soup and I spilled it here, 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 and here. I have my sewing machine now. I'm gonna start sewing all five billion pieces of these together to start making the bigger pieces for this bed. Now that's what I'm gonna do. So I decided I was just gonna sew all of the edging in one piece here. And now that I'm, I put it together, I might have made this bed a, a slightly too big. Like Jack is 12 pounds. I think these two colors look good together. Freaking got another stain on me. Well, I'm done the top or one of the pieces of the dog bed, and um, I know why the sides were so big because I made it to fit a Great Dane. Like, look at Jack compared to it. I don't know where this is gonna fit in my place. It's like the size of my couch. Next step, I'm gonna press all 50,000 of these seams. So Jack and Benson, they have their dog bed on the deck right now because summertime they like to go out there and suntan in it. And yesterday I go on the deck and you know what I find in their dog bed? Poop. And you can guess who it was. It wasn't Benson that pooped in the dog bed. It was Jack. I still don't get why he pooped in the bed. Like why did he have to climb in the bed, poop in it, and then... <sighs> okay, next. I'm going to do a top stitch along all these seams now. So I was just working on the top stitch here and then I realized that the fabric store actually closes in like 30 minutes. So I need to bring the sample there. I need to go get the squiggly tape I want to get on top here and then I can finish this. I'm back. So many, I don't even know what these things are called. I don't know, I got a lot of wavy tape and then I also found this in, sorry. This incredible cording. Now for the exciting part of the video. Not that it wasn't exciting before, but now we get to use my cricket. <sighs> Obviously, we're using my cricket for the dog bed because I'm making bunk beds for my dog, so I have to put both their names on it. Once again, thank you so much to Cricut for sponsoring today's video. We're gonna be using the Cricut Maker 3 to customize this dog bed. So one of the things I really love about Cricut is that they have a design space you guys can use to design your cuts because if you guys don't know what a Cricut is, you pretty much can cut anything on here from fabric to cardstock to engraving to foil to pretty much everything on this Cricut and it cuts it beautifully. And today I'm gonna to be using my Cricut to cut some fabric shapes for this dog bed. So this is what the Cricut design space looks like. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start a new project. I'm gonna press new project. I'm gonna press text. Text, that's what I want because pretty much for this project, I am just wanting Benson, like that, and Jack. From there, I can choose my fonts and how I want it to look. Idea for what I'm doing to this dog bed. On the side, I'm gonna put Jack there, and on the other side, Benson. You can also use your fonts from your computer, so I have a lot here. Nope. Okay. Okay. Nope. Eh, nope. 
So I think I found the font I like. So now I'm just gonna take my ruler and measure my side where I'm gonna be putting it. Three and three and a quarter inches tall I want it. Oh, that's big. Oh, that's a big boy. Now I'm gonna make it. Turn this bad boy on. And then for my mat, I'm gonna be using the purple mat because I'm gonna be cutting fabric. And then for my blade, I'm gonna be using my rotary blade. This one right here. As for the settings, I'm gonna go light cotton because I'm gonna be using a light cotton. And then I'm gonna be using a rotary blade, which I have. And then next step is just loading up the fabric. Oh. Now, I just press go. When I peel this off, it should be perfect. Look at this. Okay. Jack, 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 Jack. Anyways, if you guys want to get your own Cricut, I will link it down below along with the supplies I use. This is the Cricut Maker 3, which is my favorite because it is just the most versatile. It can cut pretty much anything out there and you can use a whole bunch of different blades. So this one's my go-to for any crafter. So I'll link that down below, but there's also other machines I do recommend for other areas and that will all be down below in the description. <laughs> Today, I'm gonna start off by zigzagging stitch all of these letters onto the side of the bed. And... I think there's a better way than just pinning these all on here. So I have this adhesive, and you don't know how many times I've used this. Like, it's almost gone. This is like an essential need of mine now. And pretty much what you do is you take this, you spray the back of your fabric here that you want to stick onto something else, spray it and then stick it on. I was just trying to show you guys how to do it and I forgot to turn the camera on. Now I'm going to zigzag them on. I just finished sewing on their names and honestly looking at them now, it kind of looks like I'm making a banner for like a one-year-old's birthday party. I'm really going all out with this project. Like, I never change colors on projects. Like, I'll just do it all the same color. I don't care if the color doesn't match. It's fine. But this one, it's going to look good. I have no idea where this is going to go in my place. I have no room for this. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, this looks amazing. This is perfect. I can do it. Just finished the side of the bed here. So two pieces are done. So I'm gonna start putting it together and I'm gonna be sewing it with this piping here. I feel like I've been pinning this for two hours already. So I just got back from a bike ride, but before my bike ride, I got this much done. I got the side all sewn on to the top here. I got the piping in there, and then I got the piping on the bottom. I have my zipper right here, which I realized I got a really big zipper because I was thinking for some reason I was gonna put this zipper down the long edge, but really it's smarter to put it down the short edge. Didn't think that one through at the store, but I have all the supplies, so hopefully I'm gonna finish this tonight. Okay, so the dog bed's done. So now we're gonna move on to the next one, which is dish towels. And the reason why I chose dish towels is one, they are super easy to make, and two, my dish towels are really ugly. So I'm gonna make three different ones. So I have these three colors, and then the other thing I have is more squiggly tape. Okay, so I got all the ironed. I ended up doing two of each color, and I used half a meter of fabric and it ended up working about, you know, that size. It might be a little bit smaller, it might be a little bigger. I don't know. I just know a half meter fabric, I just cut in half and then got two of these. Now, what I'm gonna do, I need to make all these edges beautiful, so I'm just gonna fold the edge over twice and iron it each time. This is gonna take me like 72 years to do. Next, I 
am going to sew all the edges that I just spent like two hours ironing. I got one done. I'm gonna do color by color now. I'm not gonna do all six and then go and add this cording afterwards just because I realized I'd be changing the thread way more times than I really need to. So what I'm gonna do is I'm doing the color blue. So we're working on blue. I'm done blue, okay? Next, I'm gonna add the cording before I go and sew the seams on the other one just because I only need to change one of these threads leave the bobbin, change the top thread, because this is going on the top, and then I want the back to be blue still. So I have a little bit of bad news. This morning, Benson, he got a little excited to see me when I woke up, and um, he was on the bed I made that I have not shown you guys yet, and he tinkled a little bit on it. So my idea, four coasters, four in total, we're gonna cut out squares. One square for the top, one square for the bottom. So I'm gonna cut out eight squares, and then I'm gonna put my squigglies on it. This is gonna be like the coolest coasters I've ever seen in my lifetime. The coolest coasters you've ever seen in your lifetime. I have all my pieces cut here. This is the front, back of the coasters. And then I also cut these lining pieces. I'm pretty sure this is just fleece. I just went to the fabric store and I was like, oh, this looks good for the middle. You can also get batting. There's a lot of different things you could use. Hey. No. Anyways, next step. Take two of these, plop it on top like that. Just like that. Next, I'm gonna sew three and a half corners. Next, I'm just gonna trim it a bit. Now, I'm just gonna flip it right sides out. Now I'm just gonna press it. So next, I have this little hole here, right there, kind of like a butthole. And we need to seal that, so I'm gonna do a top stitch all the way around. So now I'm just gonna pick the nicer side because these aren't perfect, so we're just gonna try to get them good. Voila. And I'm gonna take my squiggly tape here. And last time I pinned it for my towels, but this time I feel like I'm a little bit more skilled, so I'm gonna try doing it without pinning it. This looks good. Well, it only took me 73 years to finish my um, three projects I wanted to do in like one day, but here we are, 73 days later, they are done. So the first one I did, which feels like ages ago now, was the dog bed, which I'm gonna have Jack and Benson appear in this video and they're gonna test it out to see, I guess, how good of a dog bed I can make. Okay, let me show you the dog bed first. Come here, Jackie. Come here, Jackie. Good boy. Oh, do you like it? Oh, do you like it? Oh. Okay, let's not eat the butt on the dog bed. So this next one, I haven't really decided the exact use for it because originally I was thinking like, hey, a tea towel, then you could like dry off your dishes after. But now I'm thinking these are kind of like too fancy for a tea towel. I'm thinking, you know, you like go to a restaurant and they wrap up your forks and knives in like that nice napkin. That's what this is for. For like those special occasions where you don't want to give people paper towels at dinner, you give them this as their napkin. Next is the purple with the yellow. Cool. Again, two of these. And then last, which my personal favorite, the blue with the pink. Cause it just reminds me of bubble gum and bubble gum's my favorite ice cream flavor. So, okay. And then last is the coaster. This one's my favorite just because these were just so quick to make. Like I can make these in like two hours. These coasters probably make six in three hours or two and a half hours. They are really quick. These ones were definitely the easiest and probably the most beginner project I did. And I just think they're perfect. Well, that's it for today's video. So see you guys in my next one.
subscribe. <laughs>